if you look on this figure 3, this is called the maximum frequency, omega sub max. This represents negative of omega max. The frequency of the sample right here, we call it W sub S. Now, so W sub S represents the frequency of the sampling rate, okay? And W sub max is the maximum frequency here. Now, if you want to satisfy that the function at the frequency omega must be equal to zero for frequency omega greater than W max, you need to satisfy that one, right? And the reason is because if your frequency omega is bigger than omega max, that means you are talking about you are in the range between A and B. And for that range between A and B, the function value f should be equal to zero, right? So the function f should be equal to zero for the frequency w bigger than w max. If that's to be satisfied, then what happening is the frequency w should be somewhere between point A and point B. In other words, the frequency w should be somewhere between A and B. For example, let's say somewhere in, at, at, at this location right there. Because if you are having the frequency omega in between A and B, then the function value at that frequency will be equal to zero, as you can see from the graph. So from this figure, you can see very clearly the next expression, I can say uh, omega, which is the frequency, it has to be bigger than W max, but it has to be less than or equal to Ws minus W max. Why? Well, the reason is because you can see, like I told you, let's say right here, somewhere between A and B, you have a frequency omega. That frequency omega must be bigger than the frequency at point A, which means bigger than the frequency at point A is W max. And that frequency between A and B has to be less than or equal to the frequency at point B. And the frequency at point B is equal to W sub S, which is the distance from here to there, minus W max. No, W sub S. Actually, W sub S, let me say it back. W sub S means the distance from here to point B. Here, W sub S means the distance from O to point B. That is W sub S. And if you subtract that one to W sub max, then you get the frequency at point B, subtract like this. Okay? So the frequency omega in the range between A and B has to be bigger than W max, which means has to be bigger than the frequency of point A. And it has to be less than Ws minus W max, which is the frequency of point B. So that explains the next slide why W frequency must be bigger than W max and why it has to be less than Ws minus W max. So based on this equation, you can conclude that based on these two, we can say W max basically should be less than or equal to W of the sample minus W max. And then after that, we can move this term minus W max to the other side. 
So what you have will be 2 times W max must be less than WS, which is the same conclusion that we say in here. So basically, this statement say W sub S has to be at least bigger than 2 times W max. And physically, what it means that inequality say is you must have at least two sample per cycle of the highest frequency component present. Okay? So the sample frequency W sub S has to be at least twice two sample of the sample that you have corresponding to the highest frequency component. Well, in order for you, us to demonstrate to you what is the meaning of this requirement, W sub S has to be greater than 2W max. Let me give you at least, let's say, two examples. If you take a look at the first example, suppose you have, a, suppose you have a, some sort of a signal that is represented by this red curve, which clearly is some sort of a periodic function. Now you can see very clearly for one cycle, let's see how many measure data that you have. You have one measure point in here, one measure point in there, another, let's say, measure point in here, to three. This is the fourth one measure point. This is the fifth measure point. This is the sixth measure point. So what I'm trying to tell you is that if you take a look carefully, the curve that I show you right here, the one I show you with the, with, with the uh, dash line, that represents one cycle, one cycle. And then after that, things are repeated. So let's say you can say from here to here is like, like one cycle or one period. And after that, things are repeated, okay? I actually, to be, to be more precisely, the, the one cycle should be go up to there. And then after that, things are repeated. So let me show, draw another color in here so that you can see easier. OK? So here, this is another repeated cell. So the red curve portion represents like one period, one period. And then after that, it repeats itself. So within that one cycle period, suppose you measure at six different locations, like I show you on the green color, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then what happening is, when you connect the value of those discrete value by the straight line, let's say here, you get one value, you get another value in here, the second one, the third value you get in here, the fourth value you get in here, the fifth value you get in here, and the sixth value you get in there. Now, if you connect it by a straight line, you see, a straight line connection, straight line connection, straight line connection, straight line connection, you are pretty much can reproduce the original curve. And the reason you get a good a resemble of the original curve in this case is because for one cycle you have six measurement and the requirement it say basically it just you just need only two sample per cycle at least okay at least you need to have two sample per cycle according to this formula at least you need to have two samples per cycle in order to produce the, the good data. So in this case, you use six samples
per cycle. And that's why you satisfy that requirement. And that's why you got the correct answer when you reconstruct the, your discretized value. Well, let me give you another, another example. Suppose you look at figure number four. It's a, you have a sinusoidal side function. And it is sampled at the rate of six sample per one cycle. Oh, this is the one that we just discussed with you. So this is with a good result, okay? That should be the one that have a good result. Now, the next example that I want to discuss with you will be the one that you say, suppose you have a sinusoidal signal that you have sampled it at the rate of six sample per four cycle. In other words, you're talking about six sample per four cycle. Well, clearly, in this case, the ratio 6 over 4 is 1.5 W-O. And because this number is less than 2, therefore, you will not expect to get the good answer. So, why? You can see very clearly, let's say you have 6 sample. So you have what? One data point here second data point, third data point, uh, fourth data point, fifth data point, sixth data point. Okay, so you got let's say six data point like that and let's see now, you get to start from here, you start from here, then after that thing repeat itself. Now, if you compare, basically, this portion right here, you see that what I show you, the, the, the side curve using the red color, I show you, let's say, when you have four cycle, you have four cycle, you can see clearly, you have four cycle in the red color, and within those four cycle, if you have six sample, that is indicated by the six data point in the green color. Okay, so we have four cycles show in the red color and another four cycles show in the uh, blue blue color. But within those four cycles, you only ha you have only six sample data point show in the green color. Six data point. Right. So for you have six sample data point in four cycle which means this is only 1.5 and that 1.5 does not satisfy this requirement which it has to be at least double W max and that's why in the second example in the second example you don't have the good answer why you don't have a good answer because if you connect the value of this function correspond to those six sample Two, the third one is somewhere around. Uh, you connect it, you know, so you will get something like by a straight line and by a straight line. So this result does not corresponding to the first two cycles that you have in the original function. Okay, so that's why you get the answer is no good, and that is the end of this lecture, and here's the acknowledgement.